Hi, welcome back. So now let's look at the Techie Arrhythmias. This is my most favorite slide in the Techie Arrhythmias because we can see from here, we can actually differentiate between the rhythm in Techie Arrhythmias based on the QRS complex, whether it is narrow or wide and whether it's regular or irregular. So if we see a regular narrow complex, the differentials would be supraventricular tachycardia, which include junctional tachycardia. And then we also have atrial flutter and also sinus tachycardia. I know sinus tachycardia is not a tachyarrhythmia, but I still put here so that we won't forget. And if we have an irregular narrow complex tachycardia, it can be due to atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter with variable block. So usually atrial flutter is regular. However, if there is variable block at the AV node, meaning that the impulses that are relate to the ventricles are not at the same rate, so we can have an irregular rhythm. Other than that, we also have multifocal atrial tachycardia. So for regular white complex, most of the time it is ventricular tachycardia, but we also have to differentiate it with SVT with aberrancy. So we know that aberrancy is an abnormal pathway. So what happened? It is actually an SVT. However, because of the conduction pathway is broken or not right or something wrong there. So what happened is the patient can have broad complex like in a bundle branch block. So the patient is already having a broad complex. So what happened when the patient has SVT? So the patient can also present with regular white complex tachycardia. And now we have an irregular white complex rhythm. So here we have atrial fibrillation with aberrancy. So this is just an atrial fibrillation, but because there is an aberrant conduction, so the patient can have broad complexes. So in this case, patient has atrial fibrillation, but because of the condition same like SVT with aberrancy, so the patient can have broad complex. And then we also have polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. So under this polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, we also have a tosat de pont. And then other than that, we also have ventricular fibrillation. Patient with ventricular fibrillation is usually arrested, meaning that they, they collapse because the heart cannot sustain a good ventricular cardiac output. So what happened is, we say that ventricular fibrillation is an arrested rhythm rather than a tachyarrhythmia. So now, let's go to narrow complex tachyarrhythmias. So let's try the first one. So here it is regular. We can see the RR interval is regular. The rate is about 150 beats per minute. Narrow complexes and no P we've seen. So this is supraventricular tachycardia. How about this one? So here it is also regular. <sighs> Okay, so this is also regular. The rate is about 200 beats per minute, narrow complexes and no P we've seen. So this is also a supraventricular tachycardia. So how about this one? So this is also regular. You can see the RR interval is the same throughout the strip. The rate is about 100 beats per minute, narrow complexes. However, there's a special thing about this, which is the here. This look like sawtooth appearance. So this is an atrial flutter. So we can see it look like a sawtooth like that. Okay, so this is a very pathognomonic of atrial flutter. So how about this one? So we can see from here that the RR interval is not the same. So this is an irregular rhythm. There is narrow complex and the rate is about 90 beats per minute. So P wave is not present. You cannot see a P wave there. So this is atrial fibrillation. So what about this one? So this is also irregular rhythm. There is narrow complexes. However, we can see there are some P's there. There are P here, here, with different shape and sizes. So this is what we call 
irregular narrow compact tachycardia with three or more P waves, which are different in shape, sizes, and polarity. So this is a multifocal atrial tachycardia. So how about this one? So you can see that this is an irregular rhythm because the RR intervals are not the same. And then we can see that the atrial rate. So we can see that here, the atrial rate from here to here is about 300 beats per minute. So the molecular rate is less than 150. While the actual rate is about 300 beats per minute, it is an irregular narrow complex tachycardia. And if you remember just now, there is a sawtooth appearance here. So we can see it's like a sawtooth. So this is actually an atrial flutter. However, it is irregular because there is variable block at the every node. So this is an atrial flutter with variable block. So now let's go to broad complex tachycardia. So here we have a regular rhythm. Rate is about 200 beats per minute. There are broad complexes and the P waves is not seen. So this is a regular broad complex tachycardia. So the answer is ventricular tachycardia. Now let's look at the other one. So this is also a regular broad complex tachycardia. So this is also a ventricular tachycardia. So how about this? So this is also a regular broad complex tachycardia. So this is a ventricular tachycardia. However, not all regular broad complex tachycardias are ventricular tachycardias. We also have supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. So as I explained before, sometimes SVT can also present with regular broad complex tachycardia because of aberrant conduction, like in bundle branch block. However, if we have any doubt, we need to treat SVT in clinical situation. How about this one? So this is also a broad complex tachycardia. However, it is irregular. So this is an irregular broad complex tachycardia. The rate is about more than 200 beats per minute, and this is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. However, because of the distinct shape, spindle shape, like this, you can see that my drawing is still good. So you can see that something twisted here. So I, I always imagine this like our DNA strip. So this is actually a special condition, which is what we call tosa de point. So let's see what we have here. So here, the rhythm is so bizarre. We can see something like broad complexes here and there, but we couldn't really differentiate the P wave or the QRS complexes. So this is what we have in ventricular fibrillation. Even though ventricular fibrillation happens in an arrested patient, meaning that the patient is already collapsed, I still put the ECG here so that we can differentiate between ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. So with that, I conclude the class for tachyarrhythmias.